In this lecture, we are going to cover some real life deployment of sensor networks. In the previous lecture, we had seen how to design a wireless sensor node, the hardware design, the overall architecture and the different important components how to using which a sensor node could be built. So, in this basically I am going to show you how those wireless sensor nodes that are built could be used to serve different applications. Actually we have used our SWAN sensor node that I had shown you in the during the lecture on hardware design. So, uh, that SWAN sensor node we have used for multiple purposes. Uh, for serving different applications ranging from agriculture, healthcare, so on and so forth. So, here I have taken uh, two examples from agricultural application, how we have used the SWAN sensor board, SWAN sensor node uh, and we have custom designed it for serving two specific agricultural applications. The first one is basically for irrigation management and the second one for security of agricultural field. So, these are the two uh, that I am going to briefly present to you uh, for you to get a feeling of how the sensor nodes could be used for serving different applications. So, the first one as I said is the development of a sensor board uh, sorry sensor node uh, for uh, improved water management for irrigated crops and this particular solution is actually deployed in uh, IIT Kharagpur in our experimental farm we have already deployed it, it is continuously you know it is this is functional, it is operational and we are able to get data uh, from the field. So, this is one application in agriculture, the other application is basically for uh, uh, for determining or monitoring if there is any intrusions into the agricultural field uh, uh, using a wireless sensor network. Uh, so, basically as we know that uh, particularly in our country, we have different uh, uh, you know agricultural fields where the agricultural produce in the agricultural produce the, uh, the are basically lost, uh, may be due to humans uh, you know stealing them or may be due to cattle entering into the field and damaging the crops etcetera, etcetera. So, it is very important to protect uh, uh, these fields from intrusions. Uh, so, we are how we are using our SWAN uh, board, uh, SWAN node uh, for addressing these applications is what I am going to briefly expose you uh, to. So, the first one as I promised to you is the sensor uh, networking system using the SWAN board for improved water management for irrigated crops. So, water is very important you know particularly you know when we are talking about use of water in agriculture, water improves crop productivity, but at the same time it has to be you know the, the field has to be uh, the crops have to be irrigated uh, optimally. If you use too much of water uh, the crops are going to die but at the same time you know you cannot also have uh, you know suboptimal use of water because that will reduce the overall crop productivity uh, or even in the extreme cases the crops crops could die because of that and water use you know irrigation actually is very important particularly when we are talking about uh, you know paddy crops for paddy crops you know water is very important paddy crops you know uh, uh, basically survive on the basis of yield as well as the survival of the paddy crops is based on uh, primarily how much uh, is the water that is maintained in the fields you know it, it cannot be too much it cannot be too less you know what is the optimum uh, one that has to be maintained uh, in the field. So, we had we thought about how we can use sensor networks to basically uh, enable the farmers to be able to get an idea about what is going on in the field the condition of water level. Uh, in the field, how much is the soil moisture in the field and so on. So, farmers would be able to remotely monitor uh, the condition of their different fields uh, that they own. So, the overall objective of this project was to develop and test low cost wireless sensing network for irrigation water management. So, uh, you know we started with a few objectives we wanted to make. Uh, uh, a solution, we wanted to come up with a sensor network solution which would be flexible, programmable, uh, would be convenient for farmers to use and at the same time this would not be too costly. So, the final outcome uh, is like this that we were able to develop a system 
uh, which can monitor and control the water level of the irrigated crops in the field. And particularly we were targeting paddy, paddy crops uh, uh, in this, but you know so this kind of solution can be scaled for use in other types of uh, agricultural crops. The second is the design of a flexible and programmable uh, wireless sensor node. Uh, next one is the development of SMS based system because SMS is required because you know periodically the farmers need to get SMS uh, in their mobile phones about the condition of uh, the field. Uh, you know how much is the water uh, in the field, uh, uh, then how much is the soil moisture, uh, what is the temperature uh, of the uh, you know the, uh, the environment uh, where the crops are growing and so on. Development of a remote server, uh, you know how the remote server basically will be tasked to uh, do all the analytics, you know run all the data, you know analyze all the data that are being received and uh, system integration, field testing, analysis of the results, uh, these are all the different final uh, outcomes of this project, you know uh, and the overall with respect to the overall objectives. This is the overall methodology that was used uh, from uh, the wireless sensor system, uh, understanding of uh, the wireless sensor network and the database management, uh, then the development of the system uh, you know with respect to the sensors that have to be used, the specific sensors that have to be used uh, in the sensor nodes connected to the sensor nodes, the wireless sensor network altogether you know connecting the different sensor nodes with respect to the sensors you know the soil moisture sensor development of a soil moisture sensor, development of a water level sensor uh, uh, and with respect to the overall network, development of the low cost uh, network um, and then overall integration uh, into, the, uh, into the overall embedded system that is being developed and testing it and finally deploying it in the field. So, this is the overall chart of uh, flow of tasks uh, that were conducted for developing the system for irrigation management. Uh, for uh, use uh, in irrigation management in agricultural applications. Here is the overall system architecture at the very bottom layer we have the sensing and actuating. Sensing this is the bottom most layer, so sensors, actuators etcetera uh, basically figure in in this particular layer. Higher up we have the remote, remote processing and service layer. Um, and uh, which basically uh, is concerned about uh, you know uh, about uh, gathering all the data uh, from the sensors, remotely processing them and offering different services to the higher level uh, higher layer up. And these services are going to be used in the application layer by the farmers uh, uh, you know who are uh, uh, who are uh, equipped with different mobile phones over which they are going to get different alert messages. Uh, so, uh, this particular uh, job was uh, focused on uh, the development, uh, development of the integrated uh, sensor node, uh, the sensors and the remote server. This is something this diagram we have already uh, seen when we were covering the hardware design of the sensor node uh, in the previous lecture and uh, this is just a recap of the different components that are there in the sensor node that we are going to use that we are going to develop for uh, use in uh, irrigation management. So, this is the actual sensor node that is used it is uh, it looks similar to the SWAN board the SWAN node, uh, but uh, you know the specific uh, you know uh, it has been specifically designed for use in uh, irrigation management. So, it is not a general purpose solution that is used, it is you know general purpose to some extent, but then you have to customize it in order to serve the specific application requirements. So, this is what we have done, we have custom designed, we have customized the overall sensor node, the general purpose sensor node and uh, for making it useful uh, for, uh, uh, for agricultural applications. And uh, the different parts of it are shown over here, uh, I just wanted to highlight few important ones, this is the Zigbee module uh, that is used for sensor node to sensor node communication. Um, then you have uh, uh, this uh, controller, uh, this controller uh, uh, the controller can be used uh, you know uh, for, uh, uh, for control, control functions uh, uh, for that means uh, computation etcetera etcetera. The controller is not attached, attached over here in this particular figure, but you know the controller uh, could be attached you know any microcontroller like 
uh, at mega 3 to 4 or something like that uh, is uh, could be used. Uh, these are the on off switches, the programming port, uh, the reset switch, reset switch can help you in resetting uh, the, the sensor nodes. So once it is switched uh, on or off, the entire node is reset uh, from the start. Uh, this is the power on indicator, uh, then you have these, these are the inputs, uh, the DC input, uh, then we have uh, these are the level converters, uh, we have the sensor uh, uh, node configuring switches over here uh, and these are the different uh, jumpers and the external power supply. So, these are the different components of uh, this uh, sensor node. So, this sensor node that we have developed is low cost, very flexible, robust and efficient to manage water, consumes very low energy and interfaces uh, with multiple heterogeneous sensors, actuators and wireless protocols. The sensor node has as I told you earlier that it has been deployed in our agricultural field uh, in IIT Kharagpur and um, so this node basically as you can see uh, you know it use the renewable source of energy to power it. Uh, so, we have used the solar panels for powering uh, these sensor nodes, because you know typically in our country uh, in the most of the agricultural fields still today you know does not have any continuous power supply. So, in a, how we can use uh, you know uh, these uh, sensor nodes in an autonomous fashion with respect to power supply by using energy harvesting features is what we thought about. Uh, and so, so these nodes uh, as we can see. Uh, you know, so uh, these nodes not only they are powered uh, by uh, uh, you know solar energy, uh, but uh, after you know all this thing processing is done, you know uh, with respect to the sensors. So sensors are basically dipped, uh, are put in the soil. Uh, the water level sensor and the soil moisture sensor these are put under the soil, and they sense and all these computation etc are done in the soil uh, node. And finally, through this antenna basically the data are sent uh, uh, long range, uh, we are using the GSM technology for uh, sending the data, the sense data to the, uh, to the farmers in their mobile phones. We have also designed some sensors ourselves, we did not procure all the sensors ourselves. So, we for example, this is, uh, this is the, uh, this is the water level sensor that we have uh, designed. Uh, ourselves completely, it is completely uh, designed in house and the corresponding uh, you know previous version of it, this is the later version of the uh, water level sensor and this is the previous version of the water level sensor that was used uh, and uh, from this breadboard we, we are able to understand uh, the driver circuitry uh, uh, for, uh, uh, for these water level sensors. So, this is a very simple design, but at the same time it is elegant and it fits, uh, it is it, it's very small in size. So, it fits uh, as a uh, simple module that can be used uh, very easily. So, the server uh, basically there are different types of servers that have been used, repository data server basically communicates with the uh, deployed cluster head in the field by using the GPRS technology. Uh, web server is used to access the field data remotely and uh, multi user server provides field information to farmer cell phone through a SMS facility. This is the user interface uh, uh, you know this is basically you know uh, from the uh, control station uh, the interface that one is going to see and the overall portal of. Uh, so, this is the portal the design of the portal. Uh, so, from anywhere in the world uh, you know what is going on in my field. Uh, agricultural field, I would be able to access that data from anywhere, any part of the world uh, through this portal. And uh, here as you can see, it is showing that which sensor node is up, uh, the green one indicates that the sensor node is up, the red one shows that the sensor node is down, so it is not functional. So, the health monitoring of the sensor nodes are also possible through this particular portal. And then we see that after we have performed some basic login, etc., we have registered ourselves, we would be able to see the data in our screen. So, this is showing the data through the portal. So, this is the experimental setup uh, that was uh, uh, used by us uh, for study in the paddy field in IIT Kharagpur. Uh, 
so we uh, have uh, collected data between December 28, 2015 to April 18, 2016. I am going to show you the data. But this is the experimental setup. Uh, the area of each field was about roughly 3 cross 3 uh, meter square. The number of sensor nodes that were used was 4. This is because you know we have very small figures over here. The reason is that we have the experimental fields are relatively small in size. The actual fields are going to be bigger and in fact, we have done those trials as well. We have deployed our solution in much bigger fields in a village, in a remote village uh, from here about 20 kilometers from IIT Kharagpur. So, we have deployed there, we have tried it out there uh, in a bigger field as well. So, Zigbee and GPRS. So, Zigbee for local communication and GPRS for long distance communication was used. So, this is uh, basically the data uh, uh, that we received during that period uh, that I mentioned before between the, uh, 2015 to 2016 and that data uh, the average soil moisture data is plotted over here. And the next one is basically the average uh, water level uh, in the field uh, over the time span that we uh, mentioned before between December 2015 to April 2016. And this is the average packet delivery ratio uh, by the different nodes, uh, the four nodes that I mentioned uh, node number 11, 12, 13 and 14 that uh, you know the data that is sent the average packet delivery ratio uh, uh, is computed and is plotted uh, over here. So, this was the first application. The next application is basically uh, use of uh, the sensor network for automated remote intrusion detection and monitoring of agricultural field. So, uh, so what we did over here is we developed a system uh, that would be able to uh, detect if there is any intruder. The intruder could be a human, the intruder could be uh, cattle or anybody else who and once that is done then the farmers basically in their mobile phones they would be able to get alarms uh, in the mobile phones at their houses. And uh, so that basically will help them to understand that there is some kind of intrusion that has taken place in their field and then they can take corrective measures. So, we have uh, in this we have used the AVR microcontroller. Uh, so, earlier we talked about the Atmega, but here we have uh, used the AVR uh, microcontroller and um, so, uh, so AVR is just a architecture and uh, many microcontrollers basically use this uh, AVR architecture and um, so, uh, so I will show you uh, you know the how uh, the overall architecture of our solution looks like. So, let us say that this is the agricultural field and in the agricultural field we have deployed uh, these different sensor nodes uh, in the periphery of the agricultural field. And uh, this, uh, if there is an intruder, uh, these nodes they would detect the intruder, and through a multi hop path, that data is going to come to the sync node. From the sync node, uh, it is going to go through over SMS uh, to the cell, cell phones uh, of the farmers or their houses for generating different alerts, uh, 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 you know, by which they would be able to know that. Uh, something wrong has taken place. And uh, the details of this particular uh, uh, architecture and the corresponding solution can be obtained uh, from this particular paper uh, that was published by us in IEEE ICC uh, that was held in London in 2015. So, here what we have is a set of sensor nodes that are deployed in the agricultural field. Each of these nodes they are enabled with two types of sensors. One is the passive infrared sensor, the PIR sensor and the other one is the ultrasonic sensor. So, when an intruder enters the field through the boundary of the field, the PIR sensor detects the object, the ultrasonic sensor then senses the distance at which the object is located. So, this is the overall uh, you know uh, this is how uh, our system one node looks like. So, these are the two sensors that we have used, uh, these are the, uh, the proximity and uh, uh, this uh, ultrasound uh, sensor, these are the two types of sensors that are uh, used uh, PIR and the ultrasound sensor. And uh, so, uh, so as I said uh, AVR based microcontroller was used more specifically at mega 324 EAPU, uh, Zigbee communication uh, which is based on 802.15.4 standard of IEEE, LCD uh, is there and the sensors PIR and ultrasound uh, ultrasonic sensors are uh, used. The different layers, layer 1 basically co is concerned about sensing, uh, sensing by the ultrasonic sensor, sens uh, sensing by the PIR sensor uh, and so on. 
layer 2 is concerned about processing by the microcontroller, layer 3 uh, the wireless routing basically through a multi hop path the data that is sensed has to be sent to the sync node. So, the PIR, uh, so, so the, this particular layer the routing layer the layer 3 uh, basically takes care of it and layer 4 uh, is concerned about uh, the applications that means, sending the alert messages sending the SMSs to the farmers uh, uh, mobiles and so on. So, these are the different layers layer 1, layer 2, layer 3 and layer 4 and so, uh, so overall actually what we have done is uh, these sensor nodes uh, they are all uh, deployed initially uh, and they remain in the sleep mode initially that means that the communication modules uh, are in the sleep mode right sleep mode means that only they are able to sense but they are not able to send the data out so after detecting and into the, the send the, the node sends the information to the sync a sensor node forwards the information through the intermediate nodes between the originated node and the sync a node that detects the intruder is called the master node a master node chooses another node among its neighbor nodes a next hop node for forwarding the information so these are the different uh, parameters that we have used and we have plotted uh, uh, so received signal strength of the node uh, uh, then we have the residual energy of the node at the next stop and then we have the distance between the master node and the node at the next stop so then we uh, come up with a, a a composite metric which is called the selection value based on these individual ones we come up with a composite metric metric and this metric can be used to basically uh, uh, help identify whether there is uh, any problem any uh, intrusion that is taking place or not in the field. So, here is the overall flow chart in, a, in, the, in the interest of uh, time and brevity I am not going to go through these steps, uh, but I think it is pretty much clear. Uh, so, if one follows this flow chart one would be able to understand quite easily that what are the different steps uh, in the overall system. Here is the experimental setup. Uh, microcontroller uh, at mega uh, 324 was used SRAM 2 kilobytes. So, as you can see that the uh, SRAM is 2 kilobytes, EEPROM is 1 kilobyte. So, as we can see that the memory is very less over here just a few kilobytes and flash memory uh, is 32 kilobytes, power supply 4.8 volts, clock frequency uh, 8 megahertz, uh, Zigbee based communication is used, uh, then uh, uh, the batteries that are used are rechargeable. Uh, the, uh, the 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 actual uh, code uh, with which uh, uh, this logic is written is based on embedded C language uh, and uh, uh, the ultrasonic sensor and the passive infrared sensors with their corresponding model numbers uh, are mentioned in this table. The some sensor nodes uh, that were used uh, are uh, 20 in numbers with the field size of 36 meters uh, perimeter. This is the overall. 36 meter, meter is the perimeter uh, of the field um, and the number of gateways used was 1, sync node 1, GSM based alarm device that was used was 1 and the cell phone uh, is only 1. So, this is the overall small scale setup that we have uh, developed ourselves for this particular purpose of intrusion detection in the agricultural field. And this is uh, this uh, these pictures basically show you uh, how uh, the sensor uh, uh, network solution for this particular purpose of uh, intrusion detection and monitoring uh, named aid is deployed. Uh, so, this is uh, uh, this is uh, in the agricultural field uh, you know this is deployed uh, around the periphery this is one node, but like this you know there are many other nodes around the periphery of this agricultural field. Different metrics were used accuracy uh, which is defined as the number of intruders detected by the solution in percentage over the total number of intruders who actually entered the field. Uh, this is one metric uh, percentage of average activated nodes which is the total percentage activated uh, nodes required to detect an intruder uh, voltage degradation of value of voltage in certain uh, times uh, time durations to detect the total number of intruders in that particular time duration it is collected over a 3 hour period. And these are plotted over here the detection accuracy is plotted. Uh, with respect to time, uh, then the percentage of average activated nodes uh, with respect to time is plotted and also the average voltage, voltage with respect to time is plotted. So, these are the different uh, observations that we 
have uh, obtained the different results that we have obtained uh, by deploying aid in the agricultural field for um, for protecting it from unwanted intrusions and uh, so basically this solution is useful for preventing loss of agricultural produce from the field either by humans or by animals and so on so finally these are some of the references uh, um, so you know if you are particularly interested for sensor network applications in agriculture we have uh, a very good paper uh, you know a very popular paper wireless sensor networks for agriculture which was published in the elsevier computers and electronics uh, in agriculture journal um, and uh, this basically gives you a good uh, overview uh, or the good survey of how uh, different people have come up with different applications of wireless sensor networks for agriculture. So, like this not only agriculture for healthcare, for different other applications as well sensor networks could be used and uh, I would encourage you to go through different other applications as well of where sensor networks can be used different other applications. I have myself in our in my lab developed uh, sensor network applications for uh, use uh, in healthcare we have developed our own nodes uh, which can be used for healthcare monitoring of different patients uh, and so on. So, these are the few other references. So, there are a number of references which you could go through and very interesting references some of them are basically authored by me. So, with this we come to the end of uh, uh, this lecture and not only this lecture the end of this course you know all the modules uh, uh, that we have uh, uh, delivered for you uh, these have been uh, these have been uh, uh, you know these have been integrated in such a way so that you can understand the general concepts of mobile ad hoc network sensor networks etc and finally apply those knowledge in order to build an actual uh, sensor network solution so i hope that the course becomes very useful for you uh, in the uh, in the both for industry use as well as for academics. So, those of you who are in the industry or those of you who are in the academics you know. So, I hope that this course will be of uh, use to you uh, for your own purposes. Thank you.